Hey guys, happy Friday the 13th. Welcome to today's video. We've covered a lot of the Friday the 13th films in a long retrospective series we've done over the last year or so. I've spaced these out pretty far, but guess what? Today is a Friday the 13th, and there's one movie that I have not done a retrospective on. The movie in question is none other than the original Friday the 13th. And how appropriate that we go back to the very first Friday the 13th film to cap off this entire series I've done. Part of me never really wanted it to end, but God knows I can always find ways to talk about this series that I love so much. The original Friday the 13th is a film that I kind of was worried about covering, because the reality is, talking about this, I kind of have to say some bad things about the film initially. And if you're wondering what I mean by that, well, the first time I saw the original Friday the 13th, I can't say I was a huge fan of the movie. Now today, it's a whole different story, and we're going to talk about the metamorphosis with this movie, but let's go back to the beginning of the first time I saw Friday the 13th. So the year is 2009, but basically a trip to Spirit Halloween with my brother triggered me to want to see all these classic movies of the characters I knew, Freddy, Michael, Jason. I tackled the Freddy films first, but next had to be Jason. In my world, you can never have Freddy without Jason, so it was apropos I go right to him next. I told my mom to go to Blockbuster that next faithful day and to bring me home Friday the 13th. I couldn't wait to see Jason. I was not aware at all of what the first Friday the 13th film had entailed. The character of Jason, in my eyes, had always superseded the name Friday the 13th at that point. Especially as a young kid, I always knew the character named Jason, but I was never fully aware that there was a series called Friday the 13th. But by the time I was at the age of 16, 17, 18, I was very aware of the title Friday the 13th. So I go home that night and I put the movie in. It wasn't so much that I wasn't enamored with the film. I knew that I was watching what was considered to be a classic, one of the greatest films in the slasher genre. But there was that begging question, where's Jason? I did not know that this movie was about the mother. So getting through the movie felt like a little bit of a chore. I would soon go on and start renting the sequels of the Friday the 13th films, and as a matter of fact, I would buy them out of sequence, so seeing the series top to bottom wasn't exactly something that I did. The Friday the 13th original film was never a movie by the time I got done with the series that I would say, this is one of my favorite ones. I love the original Friday the 13th. I'm ashamed to say that it would be at the bottom of my list for the first number of years that I was a big fan of the series. As a matter of fact, I'll even tell you guys this. When I was buying the movies from FYE during this era, the original Friday the 13th film was one of the last ones I got, and it was always on the shelf when I would go there, but because I was more enamored with seeing a lot of the Jason sequels in it, I would just hold off and not buy this one until the last time. I'm pretty ashamed to say that, but itch the truth. Years later, I'd become the guy that would buy the original film more times than not, and more times than I would probably like to admit. But hey, things change. So what changed? Why did the original Friday the 13th become a movie that I would consider to be one of the greatest horror films of all time? Here's one thing I want to start out with that's kind of controversial to say, but I truly feel this is the case. Without Halloween, none of this is possible. I'll never take that away. But there's something that Friday the 13th did that truly set the blueprint for what became 80s horror. Yes, Halloween was before, and it is more important. I will never argue that. But I want to give Friday the 13th the credit and due that I think it truly deserves. There weren't many films that copied what Halloween did immediately after 1978 that set the world by storm. And as a matter of fact, when you look at the timeline, it was truly Friday the 13th that catapulted that genre into becoming what it became. But what Friday the 13th did so well was mix what Halloween did perfectly, and on the other end of the spectrum, what George Romero was doing perfectly with Dawn of the Dead. It blended that really great gore practical effect that was coming into the great prominence that it would have in the 80s, as well as having those suspenseful slasher elements that Halloween did so perfectly. You put those two in a blender, and that's Friday the 13th. The reality of the situation was, as I got older, and as I started watching the Friday the 13th films more, hearing the behind-the-scenes stories, hearing Sean talk about the films, and really watching different kinds of horror movies, and getting into movies from the Italian genre, that I opened my palate up to what kind of horror movies I could and ended up really enjoying. Movies that built up suspense and atmosphere and didn't have the personality of scrolling on TikTok was something that I was really starting to become enamored with. Musical scores in movies were something 
something that I would really start to keenly listen to as I got older. My tastes simply changed as I got older. And going back and watching the original Friday the 13th after that became something that was an eye-opening experience for me. I'd have conversations with Friday the 13th fans that had been around longer than me and had seen the films during its heyday, talking about the film in such a prominent light that I wish I understood. I felt like maybe I just missed the boat. But it was around 2019-2020 when after watching movies from Lucio Fulci, Dario Argento, and different films from around the world and different films from different aspects that I was able to say, you know what, it's been a number of years since I've gone back and watched Friday the 13th. Let's go back and give it a shot. It was a totally different reaction I had. Friday the 13th, the original, does so many things in horror that I love so much. Great opening scenes, the great characters we have in slasher and horror movies, and the great score. Harry Manfredini became Mr. Friday the 13th as much as anybody else. Throughout the series, when things would change, like directors and people being involved and people playing Jason, Harry Manfredini's score would stay throughout all these movies, giving it that symbolic sound that you know the second you hear it. Manfredini's music is chaotic, fast, over the top even, but it has the sound of that frantic forest feel that you would see in a Friday the 13th film that became a character as much as Jason or anybody else. And I think the score in part one is still the definitive perfect Friday the 13th score. I love it to death. Things that I would complain about initially when watching the film were things that I would ironically champion years later. There are definitely movies in horror that you could call boring, or even I would just say are boring horror films. Things simply don't happen. But what Friday the 13th does well, what I think Sean Cunningham did such a good job with, is the scenes of sheer tension in moments that you would think should be lighthearted scenes. One of my favorite scenes in the movie is when Alice is simply making some coffee or tea in the cabin. You know that something's around the corner and something's about to happen. But we're voyeuristically just looking in on her as she's just doing her thing by herself. There's this sense that she's so innocent and everything's fine, but we know that it's not. One of the things Sean did so well that I love in this movie is the shots of the lake and the woods in the background between scenes happening to give you the sense that there is something in the woods out here. It's a vibe and feel that I think is done so well, and I think one of the textbook ways it's done was in the original Friday the 13th. Then comes Pamela Voorhees. Honestly, she has become one of my favorite slasher icons, and I definitely think she's an icon. It's a motif that's so disturbing, yet almost so real at the same time. A mother that wants revenge for the way her son was treated. It's something I think anybody could identify with and understand. But the frantic performance she gave, where you can see that she She's not really a bad person, but she was driven to the edge of insanity. You could see that this was a normal woman who probably had a decent upbringing and a decent life. Years of dealing with the way her son was treated and not being able to take it, she's just lost it. Finale with Alice and Pamela is one of my favorites of the series. There's no way I could ever say that Jason is not the face of the series. Luckily, fate saw that Jason should become a character in the series and the sequels afterwards. We've talked about all of them. Every single one has their merit. But it's weird how the original Friday was a movie I just seemingly changed my mind on. It's one of those movies, among others, where my tastes just changed as I got older, and the way I experienced and watched more films from around the world, and the way movies could be paced, the way movies could be played out, is something that just made me open my eyes to the way the first Friday the 13th film is. I also think you have to give credit to the finality of the film. I think the finale of Friday the 13th, the original, is about as iconic as anything in the horror genre. Seeing Jason come out of the water, dragging Alice down from the canoe, I've asked my mom and dad if they saw this in the theater, and my mom did tell me she snuck into this because she was a little too young at the time, and people ran out of there. It's a crazy moment, and I love it every time I watch the film. It's fitting that the last Friday the 13th film that I've done a retrospective on is the one that started it all. I don't want me doing this last to make it feel like the first film is an afterthought, but really as a way to champion a movie that I started out with a negative opinion on it first, but as I got older and experienced more movies in the horror genre, I've gone back and looked at Friday the 13th as one of the best. I definitely have the original in my top five. I don't think Sean Cunningham gets enough credit as a horror director. He was up against the wall and he needed to have a hit film. But the thing that I always give the most credit for is how Victor and Sean define their own narrative. If they hadn't have said that they were inspired by Halloween and Dawn of the Dead, well, the comparisons would have been there and they would have been mentioned in a negative light towards the two. But people respect if you can be open and honest and direct with them. For them to admit that they needed to make a hit and they knew that Halloween was hugely successful and they needed to do something after 
afterwards is ironically a way that people respect them more for that. But fate would see fit that Friday the 13th came out from Paramount being pushed like no other horror film had before, becoming one of the most successful horror movies of the 80s. As a matter of fact, it way outgrossed The Shining at the time. I think the original Friday the 13th is one of the greatest 80s horror films of all time, and it's directed by a great horror director with Sean Cunningham. It's where we would see Tom Savini have some of his most iconic makeup designs, and classic actors like Kevin Bacon get his start in here. So tonight on this Friday the 13th, instead of watching Jason Lives, or instead of going to Jason Takes Manhattan, do me a favor. Let's all end our Friday the 13th night with the original classic, Friday the 13th. And I dare say, you might have a little bit of a stronger opinion on it this time. Thank you guys for watching this, and happy Friday the 13th. Huge giant thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. Without you guys, this would not be possible. To get behind the scenes photos, videos, music, private live streams, and much more, you can subscribe to my Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. Thank you to my patrons.